Today's an exciting day because you and I are going on a journey with Mikel Arteta. Right above me, he's standing. He looks pretty nice, but you know what? We can change those looks a little bit more. Now he actually looks like the best dressed manager in the world of football, but that's not the whole point of this video. Today, we want to take Mikel Arteta from the bottom of those divisions that you can find in world football and take him to the top again because a lot of people do not believe that he actually is an amazing manager. And I have to say, I was a doubter myself, but he turned me into a believer. So, Mikel Arteta, you and I, and also you guys, are going on an incredible journey today. I'm going on an adventure! I think it's only fair if we start off with FC Andorra. And the reason behind that is, obviously, Mikel Arteta is coming through Barcelona. And I wanted a club that has some ties to Barcelona. FC Andorra is owned by Gerard Piqué, the Barcelona longtime captain, is the owner of this club that plays in the second division. So what better way to introduce Mikel Arteta into the footballing world again as a coach than FC Andorra. And if he does well, maybe he gets some good moves to different clubs and that's going to be so much fun. We'll take Mikel from the second division in Spain all the way up to the top of European football. So this right here is the squad that we have at Andorra. It is not necessarily an incredible team, but obviously Arteta will do his job and we will be backing him by making transfers. And we only get to move away from this team once we get promotion into the top division in Spain. Because at that point, other teams in the world should probably be looking at Arteta and thinking, yeah, this guy's decent. Let's pick him up. First up, though, in order to be able to bring in transfers, we had to let go of players. And I have let go of a bunch. And some of them, their release clauses have been activated, which, you know, I don't mind. Starting off Arteta's career with the first signing being a Brazilian center defensive midfielder, Vitor Carvalho, for 3 million from Gil Vicente. That is the team he comes in from. Aguado, I'm sorry, but I do need to take you out. And the good thing is... We don't have to buy youngsters all the time. We can just buy established, decent players. And Carvalho comes in with a 72 rating, which actually is the highest rating in the team now. The next transfer is Camilo Candido from Nacional, a left back for 3.25 million. And he should make our team much better. Comes in at a very good rating, a 72, I assume. And yes, that once again is one of our highest rated players. Obviously, after selling a bunch, I got my budget up to like 10 mil. So I still have a little bit to play with. Now that we have upgraded the defense, it was time to bring in the main man up top. This is a player coming in from the Argentinian division, which I'm excited about. Adam or Adam Barrero, probably Adam uh, because he is Argentinian. I'm not assuming he is called Adam, but he comes in with a rating of 72 once again. He goes straight into that striker position. Seems to be a physical beast, which I love. Six foot tall, coming in from Paraguay, actually. He's not Argentinian. Comes in from the Argentinian division, though. And that, my friends, is the first team of Arteta at Andorra. The first season in Spain has come to an end, and we finished in ninth. Guys, I can tell you right now, in January, we were actually... 20th or something so seeing this is incredible and i think it comes down it comes down to the fact that i changed the tactics of the team i went ahead into the tactics and changed things up i went with fast build up because arsenal build up quite fast and then uh, later on as we get into better teams i'll probably go ahead and change a few more things here but arteta is playing some very very good football and uh yeah it's quick so barrero up top up to a 73 jacobo left midfielder turning to center attack in mid 68 bundu is a player from anderlecht he's gonna leave us albani 71 molina up to a 70 carvalho 75 was that his rating before no he came in as a 72 and then we have good defenders so i'm assuming we have made the right decisions here and we can clearly see where we need to improve so uh let's check the stats for the season real quick top three who is it it is jacobo barrero and albanis Okay. A new right mid is coming into the club, and I also found a free agent. But this one right here is Luquinhas. He is a player that plays in the MLS, so he doesn't cost me too much. 4.5 million. I was only given a small budget going into this new season, and he comes in 
as a 74 rated player. Now, at the same time, I wanted to buy Manafa regularly on the market and I saw that he's a free agent. So we have brought in a 74 rated Porto right back and Luquinhas into this team. Now, Manafa doesn't necessarily play. I think João Mario plays right back uh, for Porto anyway. So he has found a new home and Luquinhas is going to be very important for us on that right hand side. Having said all that, maybe a center attack in mid. If I can find a free agent, maybe. The boy has found the hidden gem, Guillermo Nieto. He is Spanish as well, which is just perfect. I want to know his rating though. 74. Oh, that could be huge. Jacobo, get out of here. This is my last transfer of the season. Nieto, left foot hit, 82 pace, 78 dribbling. Now this team is perfect. And we are aiming for promotion. Things have worked out in the end. FC Andorra and Arteta are going up. Now, we finished in the sixth position, guys, and played in the playoffs. But Arteta's boys have done it. Promotion de Ascenso, it's called. And we have beaten the likes of Levante in the first round. And then we have beaten Elche in the second. So... Now, Arteta and his boys are going up into the top division in Spain, which means a lot of clubs out there will be hearing his name. A young Arteta is coming through and they want them, they want him to coach them. So, before we do that though, let's see who has done well here. Nieto has gone up to 78. The entire team looks great. I will have to admit we have made some great transfers, especially going after players that aren't necessarily youngsters. The only one that we brought in was a youngster who was Nieto, and he probably had a huge impact on this team. But as we do move forward, the question is, which league do we go to? I'm excited about that. Barrero, 28-4. and four. Albanis, again, great season. Luquinhas and Nieto have done well. And even the right back with six goals. So, Arteta. Where do you want to go? A lot of clubs are going to want you. Here it is. Back in 2002, Arteta signed for Rangers. I didn't even know he did that back in the day. But here he is. Mikel Arteta returns to Rangers. And this Rangers side that we have joined has finished in the second position behind Celtic right here in this season as we join at the end of the year. So that is quite interesting to see, which means we will probably play European football. I don't know if second place gets Champions League though. And I gotta tell you guys, this team is actually amazing. Look at this, Kent on the left, Broja up top, 80 rated, Sakala on the right, Haji at Cam, Tijani Reinders came, coming in from AZ Alkmaar, Raskin at left centre mid, Yilmaz look, looks great, Davies, Goldson, yeah, Divine looks terrible, and Caseda, the goalkeeper, is kind of alright. So what we will have to do as we go into the new season is definitely focus on the defense. I'm actually being a little bit sneaky right here, but right at the end of the season, I am making a transfer. What the hell? Why did Manafa pop up? I am utilizing the entire budget at the end of the season to go for Cantwell plus the money for Luis Maximiano. A new goalkeeper will be coming into the club at the beginning of next year. 82 rating. Perfect. Arteta is shaking hands with his new right back for the team. He needs someone to help us out and it is the most important transfer of the season. It's Gonzalo Montiel, 26 million for this right back. I can't go too overboard. He is coming into the club right now with a rating of 81. I'm still in the process of selling players to be able to bring in new ones, but not looking good right now. Arteta needed a new center back and he got him now. It's Obispo coming in from PSV Eindhoven. This is going to be a fire signing for us. Armando Obispo playing alongside Branthwaite at PSV in that center back partnership these days. And he is coming in with a 78 rating. That is an upgrade for sure. But that is me actually done with transfers this team doesn't have that much money. The next player I've gone with is actually one that I was only able to buy because we just sold other players. It is a player with a face scan. It is Mbwemo coming in from Brentford. This could be a big one for Arteta and his boys. And he's coming in for Sutar plus 11.7 million, leaving me with a, with a couple of million here. Matondo is going to go down to the bench. Yes, I need Mbwemo to come in straight away. 78 rated, immediate improvement for the team. Can cut inside and score a bunch of goals. Now, finally, we can take on the season. And the goal is going to be winning the league over here in Scotland. 
and then we can see if we get a move away. Insanity in Scotland. The Scottish Cup has been won by Rangers, which is already a massive achievement for Arteta. And now the question is, has he done it in the League 2? Is this it? In the Premiership, first position, 85 points, three points ahead of Celtic. Now that is an amazing amazing season for us so now the question becomes do we stay here or do we go now in the europa league yes we played europa league we got as far as real betis in the round of 16 so that clearly was too hard for this team to achieve now the team itself though ooh, all right kent 80 broja 82 this guy's a beast man only 23 years old as well and Bemo up to an 80 haji 81 tijani rinders 82 raskin 80 defense yes a bit more lower rated yilmaz up to an 82 he's only 24 years old a couple of these players we might want to take with us montiel up to an 82 and maximiano is an 84 rated player while on the bench we have really scaled down on the players. Now, I want to see who has been the main man. Do we want to take anyone with us here? Broja, 33 goal contributions from the youngster. Kent with the 26 and 7. Raskin 11 and 5. And Buemo, good season starting off. Haji, a little bit of a letdown considering he plays in that camp position. Otondo off the bench, very good. Tijani Rinders has done well as well. So, guys, this was a great season. I, I think... I think we have achieved anything we wanted over here in Scotland. Now we need to move somewhere else. Let's make it interesting. A new manager is walking in at Leipzig. Yes, Leipzig is known for going for a younger coach. And that's what I'm going after as well. Arteta, the youngster, is coming in. And at Leipzig, at the end of the season with Rangers, we have swapped over now. So we can take a look at the team here. Leipzig has Nkunku still. Oh, boy. Correa up top. Soboslai, 87. Forceback, 79. Parejo. Ani Parejo, Schlager, Yeku, that's bad. Angelino is all right. David Alaba, Mancini. This is such a weird team. Oh, Diaby. Hold on a second. We have freaking Diaby here. We have Richarlison in this team as well. We have Parisi. I mean, Mitoma, Konza, San Maxima, Hernandez, Florian Wirtz. All right, guys, we're going to set ourselves the goal of winning the Bundesliga right here, right now. This might have just been one of the most insane transfer windows I've ever gone through, guys. Let me show you what has happened over here at Leipzig. It is truly mental. So I've sold Soboslai, 125 million. Correa, 65.8. Sa Maxima, 42. Parejo, a 36-year-old for 41 million. Parisi, don't even know the kid, but probably will use him in some other career mode. 38.7 million. Konza is left for 37. Alaba is gone. Galan is gone. Sakagni is gone. Cowell is gone. All these guys are gone. And guess what? Our budget, okay? I'm going to show you in just a second. It is actually above 200 million. Above 300 million. Above 400 million. Above 500 million. It's actually 633 million. I cannot believe that I have this team right here. I have sold Sobos Lie because I wanted to use Diaby and Vietz. This is the squad we have, and we can just go ahead and spend so much money. This might just be the end spot for Arteta because he can turn this team into a Champions League winning side. I'm sure of it. How about we bring Arsenal over here? We are bringing in Gabriel Jesus. My friends, this is the transfer that Arteta would love to see, of course, work together with him at City and now Arsenal. So why not get rid of the useless Richarlison and bring in Gabi Jesus up top to play alongside Nkunku and in front of Diaby and Vietz. I mean, it just sounds like such an insane team. Because we want the Barcelona aspect of Arteta's career to be represented as well. Not represented, represented. We are bringing in Frankie de Jong, a Barcelona player. And lads, he is insanely high rated. He is the perfect midfielder. 140 million. <laughs> Peanuts. He comes in with a rating of 92. Is that actually real? 
91, of course. Look at that. He's going to play alongside Schlager. Or maybe Schlager doesn't survive this transfer window. But I still want to make a lot of upgrades to the defense. And by the way, Kepa popped out of nowhere when I started the season. So... Yeah, no clue. Actually, you know what? Why stop right there with the Barcelona influence? Let's bring in the big man, Ronald Araujo. He is obviously one of the better center backs in the world right now. And he comes into our squad for 130 million. He is 88 rated. Takes over from Mancini straight away, of course. And upgrades that defense big time. Hey, I think I'm going to keep Angelino. I think I'm going to keep Hernandez. So, Dufer and Schlager and possibly Kepa will have 300 million to spend. So, beware, lads. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep Dufer. I am bringing in the right back of dreams. Frimpong, dude, is playing incredible football right now. It genuinely is mind-blowing how good this kid is for Bayer Leverkusen at this moment in time. So, I'm excited to welcome him into the squad. I think just this... Uh, just la this last match, he got an assist and a goal. And the same for the game before that. Like, he is incredible as a three at the back and then the right wing back type position. Five at the back, I guess. But yeah, Prefer goes on to the left. I believe in him because he's younger than uh, Angelino. Angelino was included in this deal. And yeah, Frimpong is 87 rated. I mean... He's all right, isn't he? I gotta say, Donnarumma right now at PSG is not necessarily doing too well. I, if you are watching the PSG games, you'll see it yourself. He keeps on making mistakes and it looks bad. For me, he was always a huge talent, but I personally fully expect him to get a big downgrade in the next FIFA. In this FIFA, he still begins with an 80... What was it? Um... What was his rating again? I think he starts off with an 88. So he goes up by plus four to get to a 92, which, I mean, I appreciate that he's a 92 rated player, but I fully assume there's going to be a downgrade to at least an 86 next year. We have won the cup with Mikel Arteta and Leipzig, but the big question is, how have we done here? Europa League, we lost against Olympique Lyon after beating Spurs. So at least Arteta has got that over Spurs for the Arsenal fans. But guys, that is, I don't know. Is that good enough? Where did we, where did we finish in the league? In the league table, we are going to take a look at it. Second, despite having all those incredible players, we're still <clears throat> not able to compete with Bayern Munich. And that is good. I like it because we spent a ton of money and it just shows money alone doesn't win your title. So let's see the team that has got us to that position. Qualifying for Champions League football, of course. And Kunku 92. Gabriel Jesus 87. Diaby and Vietz both above 90. De Jong has grown. Schlager has gone up. Frimpong looks insane. I mean, guys, this team is already great. I like it. I love it. I could still improve, but kind of want to give these boys the chance to keep going and performance wise we are looking at this right here 35 and 10 in Kunku 31 and 6 from Gabriel Jesus those two are really liking playing alongside each other Diaz and Diaby in position three and four and De Jong with 15 assists the Barca DNA is working. I've actually set myself a goal for this new season. I'm going to fill up the bench with players of teams that Arteta used to play for. So first up, Everton. We are bringing in Onana. Yes, Onana is obviously an incredible midfielder. And he's coming into our team right here. Apparently, he played at Union Berlin at this point in time. But this is going to be a great addition into the squad. Here's Onana. 83 rated. Lovely. After that, we're signing Zubimendi. Real Sociedad player. He used to play there. Yes, Arteta used to play at Real Sociedad from the year 2005. No, yeah, 2005 he used to play there. Then he was loaned out to Everton. Then he came back to Sociedad and then he was loaned out to Everton again. What kind of hella weird thing was that then? Anyways, he was there. So we have brought in a player from Real Sociedad. That is going to be a great addition for that midfield to help out De Jong whenever he gets tired. So I just realized that we actually have bought a player from Barcelona. We have one from PSG. Yes, Arteta was at PSG for a season on loan. So we have Donnarumma from there. Then we have from Sociedad Zubimendi now. From Everton, we have Onana. From Arsenal, we have Gabriel Jesus. Barcelona, we have done. There's only one club left. And that is Rangers, the club that we were at. So I am bringing in the left back, Ridwan Yilmaz. 63.9 million for him. 
And now this is a full-on Mikel Arteta team. This guy looks ridiculous, actually. Uh, we're going to take that man out. And that is how our bench is going to be looking. That is an amazing bench. He might even be able to compete with Lufer. So, yeah, we'll see how that battle goes. Arteta has fully Arteta-fied this team now. We have beaten Juventus and now against Spurs. Arteta does what an Arsenal, what an Arsenal manager needs to do. And now up against this former side, Barcelona. This is going to be perfect, isn't it? It would be amazing if we can play against Arsenal in the final. Can we get to the final? Yes, we do, but it's against Bayern Munich. All right, that's fine. I was hoping for Arsenal, but then again, we got some of their best players, so I guess it's not that easy. Guys, this is it. Arteta's rebuild is about to be done. If we get it done right, I'll be very happy. Have we won the Bundesliga title? Real quick, let's take a look at it. Bundesliga, 78 points. This time we have pulled it off and this is the squad. Look at it, admire it because we now get to use this team. I am so excited about it. I'm very happy with the fact that some of the players that we have brought in have grown here as well. So GG's to these lads, but guys, it's gonna be a madness. And this madness will be led by Gabriel Jesus, Nkunku, Diaby, De Jong, Vietz. I mean, this are, or these are Arteta's boys. And they're ready to take on this Bayern Munich squad. And this Bayern Munich squad is coming in with Itinia, Piera, Evre, Chiesa, Zabitza, Silva, Cucurella, Bastoni, Todibo, Osai, Samuel, and Sissoko. Hmm. Okay. Interesting team for sure. I am actually mad excited about this final, but at the same time, I want to know from you guys, do you think... Arteta is the one. Do you think he can achieve greatness at Arsenal and bring them back to Champions League glory as well? Not in terms of like winning it because Arsenal never won it, but could they actually establish themselves as a team that constantly get like quarterfinals, round of 16s, all those good things? Because technically speaking, if you look at a team that wins the Premier League, you kind of expect them to be one of the favorites to win the Champions League, like especially in the transfer market next season. What's going to happen with Arsenal? Like, if they win the Prem, they're going to get a ton of money. And with that money, they can improve. So, here we are. Arteta and his boys against Bayern. Oh, Bayern. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that misplaced tackle? Donnarumma needs to dive in for that one. First chance belongs to Bayern Munich. All right. I see you. Uh, hello? Whoa. Cleared off the line, basically. Man, Bayern. You need to chill. And Kuku, can you find that pass into Florian Wirtz, the goated talent of Germany? Go on, Florian. What have I just done? Please explain. Oh, this angle is insane. This angle. Oh my God. Bro. Oh, wow. That is the best replay I have ever seen. Florian Wirtz. This kid is the future. Wow. Arteta bringing out the best out of him. Hey, the man has magic abilities. And now we move forward in Arsenal style. Look at this. This is just football, isn't it? Diaby. Ah, messed it up with that last pass, I'm going to admit. But the passing play was nice. They are way too open on that side. Tufer is leaving us open. Oh, Araujo got ruined. Okay. All right. I see you, Bayern. Vitinha, the Braga talent who moved to Olympique Marseille. Now scores for Bayern. All right. Osai Samuel, the former Fenerbahce fullback, is sprinting away from my Hernandez, which is something I don't enjoy at all. This Bayern team is causing me way too much trouble. 55th minute, it's Bernardo Silva. All right, lads. It's time to take this one proper serious. Ultimate difficulty with all the sliders and everything. It's not easy to play against, that's for sure. Big steal by Frimpong with a slight tackle. I like that. Over to our striker we go. He plays it through. 
And that, my friends, is how you get back into a Champions League final. Bayern, you've scored two, I've scored two. I'm back in this Arteta. I want you to lift that trophy. I am not able to catch up to Osai Samuel for some reason. He is ridiculously good and they keep playing the ball through my legs, which I do not appreciate. Please let that be mine. Shot! Oh, Donnarumma. Donnarumma has to step in. At a time, I'm bringing on Zubimendi. And I am also bringing on Yilmaz because Trufer is a very, very tired. The rest I'm going to keep. Yilmaz steps in and gets the ball here. Florian Wirtz sending people on runs. Gabriel Jesus is on the best run. He's not offside. Gabriel Jesus. Jesus has awakened. Yes, my friends, in the Champions League final, a Mikel Arteta masterpiece from Mikel Arteta's most incredible striker. Donnarumma gets to celebrate the Arsenal man's goal. This is exactly how it should be. Extra time, drama and everything. Beautiful through ball by De Jong, I believe. It's the Barcelona-Arsenal connection. What more do you want? Are you kidding? I thought I had him there. Please don't. Please don't. Thank you. The defense is awake, man. Putting the pressure on this Bayern attack. Frimpong, one of the most agile defenders you can find. The guy is too fast for the game, I swear to God. Frimpong into it, Gabriel Jesus. Let's do it again, Gabriel. Let's do it again, Gabriel Jesus. Arteta's main man has done it again. Look at that. Yes. And that was enough, my friends. Hernandez gets to lift the trophy. It was honestly an amazing journey with Arteta going from Andorra to Rangers to Leipzig to then lift the biggest trophy of them all, winning the double this season at least with this squad. Arteta, he's a special man and he has built up a special story here again, filled with players that have connections to his history as a football player. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all and I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.